eu o vejo de coração aberto para receber o Good morning. I think today is the uh, the 31st of January, meaning that uh, it's the last day of January. And uh, of course, my birthday was January 1st, and so I celebrated January in a powerful way. I went to Peru and had an unbelievable experience with the Peruvian people, especially the Quechua people. And it's hard to not to love them and to understand them who they were <clears throat> and to eat their food, guinea pigs included, and, uh, and, uh, and travel their mountains and uh, lay hands on over 100 people uh, in our services. We're in chapter 2 of Leviticus. Hope you're able to join us every day now because I'm covering the book of Leviticus as much as possible. The law of the meat offering. So as you, chapter 1 is the burnt offering, which is an animal. Now the meat offering has nothing to do with meat. Uh, it has to do with food, grain. Uh, <coughs> meat refers to, to flesh. And so in the Bible, the word uh, meat offering is mincha, a gift made from an inferior to a superior. And so you're going to really learn what is a meat offering that has nothing to do with meat. And it's kind of interesting because uh, it, says, it says this, and it typifies Christ's death and typifies life in him his offering shall be a fine flour so it's a meat offering but it is really fine flour and it's interesting because it refers to the perfect manhood of Christ typified by fine flour uh, and he shall pour oil on it now look at fine flour when you look at flour you see purity. It's crystal white inside of a, a large bowl. And suddenly the priests begin to prepare this meat offering, which is really fine flour. And they pour all on it, which symbolizes the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and they begin to mix the oil with the fine flour. So in your mind, look at fine flour, <coughs> pure flour. Being, being sprinkled with oil. And of course the amount of oil. Is according to the amount of flour. So there is, there is a, a mixture here. That has to be enough. In order to. When put upon the fire. Inside of a container. It will produce unlevel bread. But. Let's, let's take a look a little more to that. And, and put frankincense thereon. Frankincense. I don't know if you know this, but it's white. It's not colorful. So oil has an essence of, of when you get into Israel, one of the things that uh, you're going to have to look at it is them selling oil, olive, pure olive oil. And they come in bottles, especially as we go into uh uh, uh, above the Jezreel Valley approaching where Elijah uh, killed the prophets of Baal and that road going to the top of the mountain uh, the ladies sell on the side of the road usually on the right side of the road left side of the road going up right side of the road going in I don't know why they, they don't be on the left side most of the time they wanted to, to buy it as you go as you go up Instead of coming down, uh, I noticed that. Uh, I noticed that as as we look at that. Now, the oil then is sprinkled according to to mass, the amount of flour, 
And then on top of that, frankincense. Now, frankincense is white. It talks about the purity of Christ, his holy purity. So frankincense is also bitter. If you taste it, it has a sense of bitterness that Christ had to undergo on the cross. In Isaiah 53, 3, and let me just uh, read this to you. In Isaiah 53, 3, uh, 53, 3, it says, He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid it as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed not. And so this bitterness, acquainted with grief, is what, uh, is what the frankincense means. God wanted to communicate with us that the suffering of Christ on the cross of Calvary was because of His purity. He took our sins upon Himself. Now, as soon as He does that in Isaiah 53, and you get that picture of the frankincense being bitter. Now, keep your mind on the mass. There's a bowl. Most made of gold. In the bowl you have a, a, a quantity of fine flour. It doesn't say uh, how much, but it has to do with the priest to carry. So it has to be the size of such where the priest could carry the, the golden bowl. Inside enough flour, maybe 5 pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds. I'd say since there were 20 priests in the rotation to take care of the altar, enough to feed 28 priests. The oil on top to make the mass, the frankincense to remember the bitterness of Christ had to go through. And then on verse 2, he introduces Aaron's sons. So the other priests in the, uh, in, in the altar, the brazen altar, are preparing this offering. And the Aaron's sons are waiting to take it and present it to the altar. So, so the altar cannot be presented with the meat offering uh, except Aaron's sons will do it. No other priest could do that. And he shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests. And so there is a connection here between the burned offering, which is chapter 1, which is meat, and the meat offering. So think of the meat offering as actually bread. Now, I want you to know that uh, I, I, I can see it. I'm visualizing this offering. And of course, you know, uh, it just makes my mouth water. Because there's one thing I like. It's a nice piece of bread. You know, especially hard wheat and warm wheat with butter. And if you see a piece of bread chewing it up like a baguette that is warm with butter. Oh, my goodness gracious. You know. You're talking, about fine, you're talking about white bread, fine flour, flour is white, oil on it to a certain extent, mixed with frankincense. Uh, so if you look at meat offering in the, in the burned offering, which is the meat, you begin, to <laughs> I'm just, yeah, you begin to get an idea that to be a priest, it's a good thing. In other words, just to be at the altar. But the sim symbolism of all of this is completely, completely, complete. Be uh, burned offering symbolizes our sins being burned at the altar. And meat offering symbolizes uh, the bread, the bread of life. So see that. This is God's idea of presenting Jesus as, as, as something like a fine flour. Uh, and he shall bring to Aaron's sons. 
By the way, the burnt offering was never offered without the accompaniment of the meat offering. Listen to this. It's, it's, in, it's in Isaiah 53, 3. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, it's in Numbers 15, 4. So let's take a look. Uh, if 15, 4. It, it, it take a minute to get here. I want to show you this. What I was going to say to you is that the meat offering, the burnt offering, which is meat, would never be offered without the the... the the bird offering would never be used, eaten by the by the priests without the meat offering. The bird offering would never be offered without the meat. Meaning, bread and meat were served together. Now, it's a, it's 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 really something. Every time I read I read this, Numbers fifteen four. Let's take a look. Numbers 15, 4, open your Bible and follow with me. It says, Then shall he who offers his offering unto the Lord bring a meat offering of the tenth deal of flour mingled with fourth, the fourth part of, of a hen of oil. I told you that a hen of oil is a certain amount. And... Uh, the tenth, uh, uh, the tenth deal of a flower is a certain amount. So uh, notice that there is, there is a, a measure here to make sure that you don't have enough more or that you have fine flour. So it would never be eaten without the burnt offering. The meat offering, which is fine flour, would never be partaken of it by the priests. Uh, without uh, without uh, the burned offering. I, I, I don't know what you think, but I, I think that the Lord is simply just, every offering that He does symbolizing Christ is measured, is together. There's a unity about it. There's an order about it. There's an essence about it. There's a quality about it. There's a preparation about it. And that is the mind of God in relation to you and I. Because the offering itself and how it's presented uh, confirms the suffering of Christ, His purity, His holiness, His righteousness. But the offering is unto God for our sins. It's not just it's a savor unto the Lord, but the offering here comes from the sinner. The fine flour comes from the sinner. The meat offering comes from the sinner. The fine flour. The bird offering, the meat, the bird offering comes from the sinner. The sinner is the one that brings this. But God offers unto himself through the priest in measured portions. I don't know what you think about this. But what I say is, is that when, when dealing with Christ, when dealing with the suffering of the cross, God takes it seriously. He doesn't just throw stuff on top of the brazen altar as if somehow it's a dump to burn any time you want. There's a certain order. I told you last week that the brazen altar is, is a large structure. You're talking about four, two bulls north, two bulls south, two bulls east and west. And they're large bulls made out of bronze, about about five to ten, ten, ten to fifteen feet in in height. These are monster bulls. Made out of bronze. In each side of the altar. The altar is 40 by 30. 40 feet by 30. It's a large, large, large swimming pool. Now underneath of it. You have. S different types of. Of. Heat. More wood here. Less wood there. And, and of course it has to do with. A piece of, of a bulic. Or. A turtle dove. On the south side. Of the altar. The brazen altar in order to burn lightly so the wood is divided all that that means to me is that God is simply saying to us that when he deals with our sin and our offerings unto him he likes it in order he likes it together he likes it sparkling clean and beautiful because symbolizes Christ so he deals with Jesus 
in a, in a mystical form of an offering, as if it is something pure and holy and right. He is, he's talking about the death of his son thousands of years before it took place. So you have to put that into your mind and begin to realize that what's going on here is God's introduction of Jesus unto the world. That's the essence, the power, the, the strength. By the way, glory symbolizes, Isaiah introduces the concept of glory. And I want you to learn this because I heard so much last night about glory, but not, none of that fits. Glory symbolizes the coals in the altar being put, symbolizes sin being put and burning the mouth of the prophet Isaiah. Meaning it burns the sins away. Glory comes with forgiveness of sins, not the other way around. In other words, praise and worship don't bring the glory. Glory brings when you, we repent of our sins. That's when the glory comes. Okay, good. I'm not going to go into that because it has nothing to do with the text. But, but uh, just another 10 cents there to give it to you. Okay, good. All right, let's go. And he shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests. Now the he here symbolizes somebody. Who do you think it is? Could be Moses. Well, it doesn't say. It couldn't be Moses because... The priests do the altar work. So he had to be a priest. Notice that the Aaron's sons are above any other priests. Why that's the case? Because their outfit, the breastplate of righteousness, is on Aaron's sons and not on anybody else. So there is an order also of priesthood being presented. And he shall take their out. His handful of the flower thereof, the flower that's there, and of the oil thereof, the oil that's there. Notice that the oil here is in, there is a, a, an amount of oil, a hint of oil. With all the frankincense thereof. So there are three ingredients. Flying flour, frankincense, which is bitterness, and oil. Now, the three make a, 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 a measure, an essence of how you make bread. You know, I don't, I don't make bread. Uh, I only buy bread. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, you know, uh, I like to eat bread, I told you. So, but the essence is that it's a mixture. <coughs> and the priests, the priests, speaking of those who prepared everything, shall burn the memorial of it upon the altar to be, to be an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma unto the Lord. The memorial here pertaining to the Israelites not failing to remember what the Lord has done for him. It pertains to the fact that God will not forget his promises. A memorial means God don't forget his promises. Now how, how, read Psalm 20, verse 4. Uh, Psalm 20, uh, verse 4. Let me read it to you right away. It says this, Grant you according to your own heart and fulfill all your counsel. It's, 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 uh, it's uh, Psalm 20, verse 4. The words that the high priest to the people during the offering of the sacrifices. That's what the high priest would say. Grant you according to your own heart and fulfill all your counsel. They would say that. Grant that you receive this in your own heart, O oh God, and that your promises be fulfilled. The high priest would say that presenting uh, uh, the uh, the meat offering, amen. 
Are you following me? Are you seeing the mixture of the bread putting together the oil, the frankincense? You're getting the idea, the golden bowl, and the priest coming to Aaron's sons and presenting that mess of, mess of bread. And then it says, And the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. Now, whatever is left over, it's given to the high priests. So there's a difference between priests and high priests. When the meat offering was brought to the priests, and, and I speak of it being brought by Israelites who were offering the sacrifices, only about a handful of it was burned at the altar with the burnt offering. The priests would take the reminder, the remainder of that for themselves. For it was what was ordered by the Lord. And, the, and this is God's instructions. And the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron and his son. Now isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Instead of God taking the whole thing, he just said, it, uh, Rick, John, uh, Blake, Cindy, uh, uh, Emily, approach the table, bring your fork, <laughs> because you're going to be offered a piece of bread left out of the altar of the Lord. I, I think that the most coolest thing I've ever heard, that God will not take the whole thing, but he would offer a little bit for the priests. Now, I just think that's just wonderful because, you know, I like to be there and get a piece of that chunk of bread warm from the altar of God. And I'm going to just eat it up. <laughs> just, oh, thank you, God. Oh, and then you pick up a piece of filet mignon that's just about done down there and just begin to eat that. Now, that is the essence of the priesthood mixed with the offering unto God. Because he's always thinking about his, his priests. You know, I see that sweetness and tenderness as I pay budget. You know, I go to Cindy and, and, and Cindy says, I, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. It's going to take a little time, I'm not ready. And then suddenly after a little while, she says, okay, you know, I don't need any money from you. Meaning, God already paid for during the night. <laughs> He paid everything during the night. He just did a miracle down there, and suddenly the budget is paid. And so, I understand about the Lord offering, offering unto out of His offering from the sinner to the to God, uh, a little bit of it. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Now, they had to eat this in the temple. In the tabernacle. They couldn't take it home. And divide between the children. And wife. They had to eat. In the, in the precincts of the tabernacle. As was the case with all the food that was most holy. This included the, the shoe bread. And the flesh of the sin offering. And the trespass offering. Which is in Leviticus 10, 12. Uh, uh, let me take a look at Leviticus 10, 12, because that, that's interesting, isn't it? You couldn't take it home. It's in Leviticus 10, 12. And uh, there it is. It says, And Moses spoke unto Aaron, unto Elijah, and unto Atamar, his sons who were left, Take the meat offering that, the, the, that remains of the offering of the Lord made by fire, and eat it without leaven beside the altar, for it is most holy. So you could take it home. You know, it's not something we share with the whole family. You have to eat in the presence of the Lord. And notice that verse, uh, that this verse 12 simply says, in the side uh, of the altar. Beside the altar. Beside the the altar. Which altar? The brazen altar. Beside, in other words, <laughs> it was warm. Ain't you get a little hungry now when I talk about this, all this food? You must be just a, 
just just salivating all this together. But this is God, God, this is how God feels about those offerings. Oh, mean that God loved to eat? No. That it represents Him taking on Christ the sins of the world. He loved the love of God for you. Is that sweet? Is that romantic? Is that satisfying? Is that gratifying? Is that beautiful? Listen, if God sees our sins and He treats us this way, you get an idea of how much He loves you. The love of God. God not saying, now, that, that God has taste buds. Sure He does. He has taste buds. You know why? Because He savor. The smell is sweet to Him. He loves it. But it has to do with the love for you. Without the sinner's confession of sin to Him, there the food has no taste. What makes the food tasteful is that it's you offering unto Him and the love of God. If you want to see the love of God in a tasteful way, this will tell you. All right. Good enough. I think I know where I am. If you don't ask, what is my verse here? Okay. Yeah, verse, verse, verse 4. Now, let's, let's continue because I only cover four verses and it's already 28 minutes. If you bring an oblation, a sacrifice present, of a meat offering baked in the oven, prefer, prepared before it was brought to the tabernacle. I mean, it, it, it wasn't uh, something that you cooked at the tabernacle, but prepared at home. Okay? It shall be unleveled cakes, fine flour, mingled with oil, or unleveled wafers, anointed with oil, symbolize the Holy Spirit. So there was something that could be done at home. It's interesting. Now, what does that simply mean? It means that the offering of, of, this, of this fine flour and this in this uh, uh, mixture of, uh, of, uh, of oil and frankincense could be done at home, a small little cake. So it's an offering. What do you mean? I have a sin. I don't have any meat. I'm a poor widow. All I got is a little flour in the bin. Little oil and frankincense from somebody that gave me a little, which was very expensive. You know, when when the when when uh, when uh, the magi came came to see Jesus, you know, they baby, they they get, they they brought frankincense, which is bitter, but it's very expensive. So let's say the widow has a little bit of frankincense from somebody else that gave her. She does this little 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 just a drop of frankincense to, and she does this little cake. And he goes, she goes to the altar. And the priest says, next. And she says, that's all I got. That's all I got. And the Lord says, I can take it. Put it on the, put it on the fire and burn it. And, uh, uh, and take a little piece and give to the priest. Okay. Now that, that just a, just a, mm, mm, mm. That just, oh, thank you, Lord. You know, think about a Katra mother. A Katra lady. You know, the little long dress, big old dress, you know, all colorful. And she's right there bringing before the Lord a little piece of flour all mixed with oil. Okay? Because if there is humble people in the life of the, on the face of the earth, it's got to be the Quacha people. I have never seen more humble people than that. Okay. Good. You shall bring a little bit. Good, good, good. That's good. That's good. Good. All in love. And if your oblation be a meat offering. Baked in a pan, it shall be a fine flour and level without, without yeast, mingled with oil. You shall part it in pieces and pour all on it, is the meat offering. So, you're probably kind of a, a little bit confused now how much offering is involved here. It has to do with the quality of the fine flour which symbolizes the purity of Christ. I hope you learned something today. 
because I took a while reading this last night in preparing to be with you. I hope you learned something. And I hope as you study this and listen on a podcast uh, on your car, you remember that the priest here, I'm the priest, need an offering. Amen? Amen. I mean, in the past, the offering is burned. Now, the tenth needs to be sent into the priest. And please, I need to eat some bread. Send me an offering. Amen. Lord bless you. Mm-hmm.